Hello my crafty friends and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. One of my favorite themes on uh, an art journal is fall, just love the color combinations, but also Halloween. And although we don't celebrate Halloween in Greece, I always make pages every year with that theme. So this is my 6x6 disc bound journal. I like to cut out my pages and then bind them together with the rings. These are two pages that I shared in uh, previous years and there are videos for both of them available on my channel. I will make sure to link them at the end of this one. And for today I'm going to use elements that I used on both these pages to create a new one. So again for today I'm shopping my stash. I have a bag with the, those uh, Halloween quotes as well as a bag with the paper dolls. And I'm starting with a 6x6 watercolor paper. This is thick watercolor paper and I'm going to bring in my punch and punch the side. This is perfect for creating disc bound journals. I have a piece of washi tape at the bottom to mark where I'm placing the pages every time and that washi tape stays on top of my punch forever. So when I punch out the holes and I bring in the 6x6 discount journal, I know that they are going to fit perfectly one on top of the other. The pages are nicely aligned. For my background today, I'm going to play with my sprays. I'm making sure that the page is quite damp in the beginning with water. And then I'm going to bring in my dilution sprays. I will go with uh, purple and an orange. Dilution sprays are really beautiful. They are very vibrant. And this color combo is perfect for Halloween. I did use a lot of color. I oversprayed just because I wanted those colors to be oversaturated. Now I am lifting the page and turning it around. This is going to allow for those colors to blend to one another. And now I'm using my heat gun to make sure that this page is completely dry before I move on to the next step. One of the fun techniques that you can do with uh, dilution sprays is the ghost effect. All you do is to apply on top a stencil and then you can go over it either with a baby wipe or you can just spray with water. This is going to react and it's going to lift the ink from underneath. I'm using this stencil which is a very old one from uh, the Tim Holtz collection. Again, shopping my stash. I'm going over it with my baby wipe. In the beginning, this effect is not so visible, but as the water dries on top of the paper and reacts with the ink, you will be able to see the design even more. One of my go-to techniques when it comes to pages is to darken up the edges. Here I'm using Distress Ink, that's black soot, and this is not the oxide, so it's going to stay nice and vibrant at the edges, but having darker edges helps the colors at the center to look even brighter. And now I'm going to bring in my favorite text stamps. These are text stamps from previous collections by Tim Holtz. I have a little box with them inside. These are the ones that I use again and again throughout the years. I'm bringing in my archival link and I'm going to play with them and stop all over the place. Sometimes I go with tone on tone when it comes to background stamping. This time I'm going with black just because I want that to be quite vibrant at the background. Plus I'm uh, going for a Halloween page so I like to have lots of black there. Now I'm going for my go-to splatters. Here I'm using just black acrylic paint that I have diluted with water and I'm going to add a few splatters. And because I'm never happy with the amount of splashes that I have, I'm going to also use the orange spray that I used for the background and add a few of them on top. Now I grabbed the bag with the paper dolls. These are the Halloween set and you will find the same design in different sizes. These are the witches that I used in a previous page, but this time I'm going to use just the broom from them. I'm planning to have the little girl on top of the broom as if she's flying and I'm also going to use one of the hats from the witches. Now this is a great example on how you can use photos or magazine cutouts to create your focal points. Just mix and match them. Collage is a lovely technique that can create beautiful focal points for your pages. So here I'm just auditioning the girl with the different hats. I'm going to choose one of them and I can use my craft knife to create a little slit so that I can slide her head inside. 
As I mentioned before, there are different sizes of these paper dolls. I chose to go with a smaller one and you will see why I am planning to have her look as if she is far up at the sky. So I am going to create a moon. I just use a circle die from my stash to cut out a moon out of uh, craft cardstock. And let's add some color on the moon so it doesn't look so clean. This is a scattered straw. I did uh, smooth some of that ink on my glass mat. I'm going to dab the moon on top. And then uh, this would work just fine. I'm going to add a little bit of brown there just because I cannot stay away from splashes. So here I'm using a dark brown distress ink again. Now the moon still looks very clean, so uh, in order to bring all the elements together, I am stamping with the same stamps that I used for the background. This way I feel like I bring all those different elements together, so they become coherent and part of the same project. And now it's time to add my focal points on top of my background. I'm sticking everything down with my white glue. You can also go around your elements with a black marker or with uh, your uh, blending tool and make sure that you get rid of that white edge so it doesn't show. This is going to help the elements blend nicely with the rest of the page. And then finally I'm going to stick my little witch with her broom on top of the moon. So it looks as if she is flying up at the sky. You can add a fun quote and call it done, but if you want, you can take it a step further. I do have this die with a row of buildings. If you have any dies with uh, cityscapes, this can uh, make a huge difference on your page and take it to the next level. So I did die cut it from black cardstock and this is a die that I have from a very old collection by my favorite things. And you will see that the moment I stick the uh, row of buildings at the very bottom, the whole page is going to get a completely new perspective. Now there are holes for the windows. You can add some uh, glitter cardstock at the back. I didn't like that. I didn't want to have that um, glitter on top of my page. So I am going with the tag that I used to cut out the moon. And uh, I'm just uh, spraying on top a little bit of water along with a scattered a straw which is the same color that I used for the moon and I'm just going to cut out little pieces so that I can uh, stick them at the back of the windows to cover them up completely. These are going to look like lights. Now this time I'm going to bring in my Distress Oxide in a light pale color, yellow color, so that I can uh, dab a little bit of that ink with my finger dabber on top of the buildings. Now the Distress Oxide ink stays nicely on top of dark cardstock and um, it is going to look like uh, the light of the moon is hitting on top of the windows. It's going to add some highlights to bring the buildings more to life. One thing that I also did on these buildings that I forgot to shoot on uh, this video is uh, that I stamped on top of them with the stamps that I used for the background and although I used black uh, ink over black cardstock, you will see at the close-up photos at the end that it does show a little bit so the buildings don't look completely flat and so black, they do have some variation with stamping on top. And also keep in mind that if you want the stamping to be more visible on top of the Balak buildings, you can also use Distress Oxide ink, which stamps beautifully over dark cardstock. Now I'm bringing in a star stencil and I'm going with some uh, glamour paste. This is a paste by Stamperia that has some shine on it. Hopefully you can see all that shine that it has. It's not black, it's off black kind of silver, dark silver. And just because this is a Halloween page, instead of going with yellow paste or with golden one, I decided to go with this silver one, which does have some shine on it, but it's not going to add even more lights and highlights on my page. But of course, that's uh, completely optional and up to you. If you want to recreate something similar, you can always go with yellow stars. Always remember there is no right or wrong, as I usually say, there is no art journal police. Do whatever makes you happy at that moment. Art journaling is uh, a creative way to make you happy, not anybody else. And as long as you like it, then it's perfect. Here I'm using some washi tape. These come from a set by Tim Holtz that I have again for years. This is a Halloween set with lovely designs of washi tapes, perfect for this type of projects. 
Again, shopping my stuff here. I haven't used anything new in this page as well, just like I did on the previous page that I shared last week. So here I grabbed my stickers. These are favorite booklets that I keep on using again and again. I'm uh, picking a few phrases that have to do with Halloween, like cast a spell and trick or treat. And I'm not pressing too hard. I'm going to stick one here, but I will remove it later on. I am going also to bring in my chipboard quotes. These are all about Halloween in a pack. And just because it is very thick, I'm just peeling off the top so that it doesn't um, give so much dimension on my page. I'm going to stick it with white glue. And I did a few white splashes, I also did some highlights with my white gel pen and called this page done. Here are some close-up photos on the Halloween art journal page that I made for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired, just like always, down below the description area you will find a full list of all the supplies that I used. Don't forget to leave me a comment, to like the video and I'll see you all next time.